David here with Fig Mood on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Travels into space have been a big part of the news over the last few weeks, and today I have for you a unique 3D printed pen which celebrates the 50th anniversary of one of the most, uh, if not the most, famous trip into space, the Apollo 11 moon landing. Uh, the name of the pen is the Moonwalk Pen. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to John Hubbard, the man behind the creation of this pen, for providing it on loan for review. John is based out of Huntsville, Alabama, and his first engineering job was on the design of the Saturn V moon rocket, which launched all of the Apollo lunar missions. He is a fountain pen aficionado and decided to create a pen to celebrate the anniversary of the moon landing. Uh, he also has a background in CAD design, which led him to want to design the pen using computer modeling, which led to the use of 3D printing to create the actual pen. The pen arrives in this plastic 3D printed box, which is appropriate given that the pen is also 3D printed. Uh, inside we have a certificate of authenticity, which is inside here, and like there, and inside of that we have the pen. This is the Moonwalk pen. On July 16, 1969, astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins launched from Kennedy Space Center in Florida in the tallest and most powerful rocket ever built by man. And four days later, on July 20th, Armstrong and Alden landed on the Apollo lunar module on the moon's surface. Uh, the lunar module was named Eagle, uh, hence the iconic phrase, the Eagle has landed. Uh, the pen is a variation of a classic cigar shape. Um, I've tested other 3D printed pens which have felt very plasticky. Um, there's a certain 3D printed feeling that those pens had. Um, I'd say the quality of this printing is significantly better. Um, it still doesn't feel up to the standard of resin or acrylic, but this one is better. Um, let's start by taking a look at the top of the cap. It is rounded, and as you can see it has a fair amount of texture to it. The cap depicts a macro look at the surface of the moon uh, with several very nicely detailed craters. Um, I was impressed with the high level of detail in these craters. Uh, the smaller craters really don't have that 3D printed look to them with little telltale lines of where you can see the layers. Um, it's very impressive and well executed. I think that it helps that the surface has a paint treatment uh, as opposed to just having raw material. There is no traditional band or exterior branding on this pen. Um, at the end of the cap, we have a fairly large step down to the barrel. Now, the barrel is straight, um, and it's not as textured as the cap. Uh, the barrel has more of a micro look at the dusty and gravelly lunar surface. On one side, there's a recreation of a very famous photograph of a footstep on the moon. Again, the detail is very nice and does a really good job depicting the footstep. Then, on the other side of the barrel, it has the quote, We came in peace for all mankind, which is a quote inscribed on the Lunar 11 lunar lander, which is still up on the moon to this day. Then we have the end of the barrel, which, like the top of the cap, comes to a rounded point. The cap pulls off. I wouldn't say it snaps on. It's more of a tension fit. And underneath, it's equipped with a fine Franklin Christoph branded number no. six stainless steel nib. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section begins with a flare and is fairly short. Um, it angles up very slightly before a rounded step up to the barrel. Uh, the section is comfortable, but it is more of what I would call the raw 3D printed material, so it does feel a little bit more plasticky than the rest of the pen. Um, the pen is long enough for me to use unposted. The cap does post. It does post deeply and securely, and it's light enough that I don't feel it back weights the pen or throws off the balance at all. Uh, and the edge of the cap against my hand doesn't feel sharp or uncomfortable. This is a cartridge converter pen. It accepts standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. The Moonwalk Pen is available exclusively through moonwalkpen.com. I'll put a link to it in the notes below. 
Um, there was an artist proof edition of a dozen pens, which has sold out. Um, and now there is a limited edition of 50. Um, these are priced at $270. Um, while I feel that there's a lot of cool and distinct elements to this pen, uh, for me personally, I feel that's a bit on the high end in regard to evaluation. Um, I do really like the detail on this pen though. Uh, the 3D printing has come a very long ways and I'm really excited about what will be able to be done in the future with this developing technology. Uh, thanks again. Go out to John Hubbard for the loan of this pen for review. Uh, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Moonwalk pen. I just want to give you another closer look at the detail here. I just think the detail on that cratering is really neat. Uh, and then the detail on the footprint is really nice as well. Um, I like how it's firm here, but then around the edges, it's a little soft, just like the surface of the moon and rather dusty. So I think that that effect was really done well here. And this is what it looks like in comparison with some other pens. Here it is with a Pilot Pereira. And here it is with a Twisby Diamond 580. And here it is with a Lamy All-Star. In regard to some other pens, here it is with a Mont Blanc 149. It's very similar in size to the 149. Here it is with a Sailor King of Pen in Royal Tangerine. And here it is with a Pilot Metropolitan. In regard to uncapped comparisons, um, here it is with that 149. And then here it is with the King of Pen. And here it is with the Lamy All-Star. Okay, so here we have the Moonwalk Pen. This is a fine stainless steel nib. And the ink that I'm using is one that I thought matched the surface of the moon well, which is Sailor. Uh, we'll call it Sailor number 123. This is what the ink looks like. Um, it's a really cool ink that starts off as kind of gray, but then um, also has a lot of uh, purplish and uh, reddish sheen to it. It looks really cool. Um, it's something very similar to Troublemaker Petrichor. Uh, and then this is what it looks like with Krishna Pencil, which is a little bit more on the gray side. This is what the Sailor Ink Studio bottles look like. Um, the, uh, the 123 is one of my favorite Sailor inks. It's really, really cool. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Um, I find this fine nib to work just well and to uh, not be too scratchy. Uh, you can get a little bit of line variation out of here. Franklin Christoph does a good job of tuning all of their nibs. Uh, in regard to ink flow, for a fine, I find it to be decent. And for reverse writing... Um, it's not necessarily the best thing that this nib is used for, but in regard to some fast writing, the feed keeps up just fine. So here we have the Moonwalk pen. Um, I think that this is a very interesting design uh, and it gives me hope for what is possible for 3D printed pens in the future. Um, I think that the design elements turned out really sharp and I'm looking forward to seeing what other 3D innovations are coming into the future. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.